Committee today, the 15th of March 2021. Just to make you all aware that today's meeting will be recorded. I would also like to welcome any members of the public to today's meeting. Can I kindly ask you to observe the meeting only as you are not allowed to speak or to participate in the meeting? Please ensure that your phones are switched to silent for the duration of the meeting. In addition, for members, can I refer you to the protocols for remote meetings, which have been previously been highlighted? That is, your microphone should be switched to mute unless you are speaking. Should you wish to ask a question or make a comment, can you please indicate either via the chat function or by raising your electronic hand via Teams? <clears throat> I will assume that you have all read the paperwork before us today prior to the meeting. Please only use the chat function to indicate if you wish to speak as an alternative to the electronic hand function or to raise any technical issues. When asking a question, please introduce yourself and please indicate which page number you are referring to. So to begin, I am Councillor Lynette Purcell and I am chairing today's meeting of the Special Audit Committee. Nicola, could you take a roll call, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, yourself, Councillor Purcell? I'm present. Thank you. Councillor Renke? Present. Thank you. Councillor Freegard? Present. Councillor Miller? Sorry, you're on mute, Councillor Miller. Present, sorry. Thank you, Thank you Councillor. Councillor Wood? Present. Councillor Maizan? Yeah, present, not yeah. Thank you. Councillor Davis, Oliver Davis? <clears throat> present. Councillor Taylor, Rachel Taylor? Present. Thank you. Councillor Woolcock? Present, all present. Councillor Clark? Present. And Councillor Richards. Present, all present. Thank you. Is that all the members we've got present? Lovely, thank you. Then we have officers from Audit Wales, Julian Gillett. Yes, present. Thank you. Um, Karen Jones, Chief, Chief Executive. Present, Nicola. Thank you. Craig Griffiths. Present, Nicola. Thank you. Who Jones? Present, Nicola. Thank you. And Maria Darnell? Present, Nicola. And Jane Woodman Ralph. Present. Thank you. Have I missed any officers? No, thank you. And we have apologies from Joanna Jenkins, who's the voting lay member. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so for agenda item two, declarations of interest. Are there any interests to declare? Please indicate by raising your electronic hand via Teams or indicate via the chat function and when called state details. The Democratic Services Officer will then forward an electronic version of the declaration of interest form for you to complete and email back to the officer. Are there any declarations? I can't see any. Democratic Services Officers, can you see any declarations? Yes, Chair, uh, yeah. Councillor Stuart Davis. Right. There could possibly be a conflict of interest if we discuss it in the leader because he is a family member. Right. Are we okay with that, Democratic Services Officers? Craig, would that, Craig be your best person to ask, answer that, Chair? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Purcell. Councillor Oliver Davis, I would recommend at that point then declaring a prejudicial interest and stepping out of the meeting in that sense in light of the family connection. Um, given that at this stage, obviously, it will be focused on the terms of reference, but to avoid any potential conflict, I would advise a prejudicial, a prejudicial interest. Okay. So does that, does that mean I come out of the meeting? Uh, yes, Councillor. Yes. There we are. Goodbye. Thank you. Any other declarations? I see none, so we shall proceed to agenda item three, which is the report on the governance review presented by the Chief Executive. Karen Jones, Chief Executive, do you have anything you would like to add to the report that has been previously circulated to the committee, or shall we go straight to questions from members? The report. Uh, is, sorry, 
Sorry, Karen. I was just about to say that the member is, is for members, is for information, so there's no requirement to vote. But I just wondered if you had anything you would like to add. Thank you, Chair. And can I just thank the committee as well for coming together at such short notice? So I do appreciate it. I thought it was important that this report came before you sooner rather than later. There's just two things I want to say, I think, um, at the beginning of the meeting, Councillor Purcell. The first is that the purpose of the report is to give you an assurance about actions that have already been taken in relation to the matter that's before you this afternoon and also to give you an opportunity to ask me any questions about the review that I've been that I have commissioned which is set out in the terms of reference I am not able to go into the case itself so I think it's really important I say that to all members of the committee at the start I'm not able to discuss the case itself that matter is now in the hands of the Ombudsman and other agencies, so I'm not able to discuss that, but I can take questions on the terms of reference if you have any about that, uh, Councillor Purcell. Thank you very much. Um, I have a couple of questions myself. If anybody else has any questions or wishes to ask anything, if they can raise their hands. My first question was, it refers to the school reorganisation. And I just wondered how you are communicating with the community affected by the school reorganisation. For example, I know that ward members were not up to date um, on March the 12th, for example. So I just wondered what your intentions were going forward on communicating with the public affected by school reorganisation. Sorry, Councillor Purcell, the review is looking at the processes generally for school reorganisation. So you are, are you asking me about a specific school reorganisation proposal or are you asking me about school reorganisations more generally? Um, the specifics, the specifics. So can just so that I am clear, you're talking about the Swansea Valley school reorganisation yeah. proposals. OK, yeah. um, so just very briefly on that, because obviously it's not a um, an item of business for this committee this afternoon. But I'm happy if it's helpful um, for yourself and any of the members uh, of the public listening in to say that we were due to issue the consultation report on Monday uh, this week. In light of what's happened, I've taken the decision to delay the issuing of that report. We're working on a timetable at the moment and I'll be in a position to say something to members and to members of the public once that work is complete. But there isn't anything else I can say at the moment other than ha I have delayed issuing that report. Thank you very much for that. I have another question, but I can see Councillor Woolcock is indicating. Uh, would you like to ask a question, Councillor Woolcock? Uh, Chair, I think Councillor Miller was was before me, so I'm, I'm happy for him to go first. I didn't see him. But this is the problem with doing it from home in a, in a committee meeting. In a room, we'd be fine. Councillor Miller, take it away. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> My question is to do with Appendix 1. I believe that's page 5 on... And... ...what timescales are involved. Hello? Yeah, Councillor Miller, you were breaking up a bit there. I think you were asking me what timescales were involved with the review. The time was, scale, uh, yes, the timescales and the span of the uh, investigation, if you like. Uh, from when do they start to current date, I assume? So uh, the review was commissioned last week, Councillor Miller. It's already underway. Um, at the moment, the reviewers are expecting to be able to give a report in the middle of April, but obviously that will depend on what the findings are. So that's their estimate at the moment, but uh, you know we have to wait and see um, what um, what the findings are. No, I think you've misunderstood me, Chair. Um, what date are we going back to to scrutinise? or to investigate? What we're investigating, Councillor Miller, are the current processes and systems that the Council has in place in relation to each of those items that are in the terms of reference. So we're looking at the processes we've got in place now. Right, thank you. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Woolcock. 
Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, to say that um, it's a comment, really, this first part is that I think that the chief executive has, act, has acted absolutely correctly. Uh, and I, and I, I believe that the um, the proposed way forward, which I understand has already commenced from the 8th of March, is the correct one. So that's got that out of the way, Chair. But I just wondered as well whether there was any benefit in, in uh, holding a seminar or uh, um, a training session for all members to go through the current protocol that we've got and the systems that we've got uh, so that we can look at, uh, 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 I don't know whether it, it's got, it may be a little bit late after this review, Chair. Uh, so I'm just wondering, just as a refresher for members, whether it's worth go, uh, holding a seminar uh, or a training session on our current systems. Thank you. Have you any thoughts on that, Chief Executive? Um, I, th I think that is something, uh, Councillor Wilcock, that uh, with your agreement, uh, perhaps Craig Griffiths and I can give some consideration to it. I think if the review does um, report around about the middle of April, it may be worth waiting the outcome of it in case there are changes that the reviewers would recommend to Council that we should be considering. And obviously, I don't want to prejudge the outcome of that at the moment. But I think if there are any particular matters that members feel that they would like us to do some refresher training on, um, you know, in the next couple of weeks, we are happy to consider that. But if you, if you don't mind, rather than give you an, giving you an off the cuff um, uh, response to that, I think it's something I'd probably just want to think through um, a little bit, if you don't mind. Are you okay perfectly that? acceptable, Chair. Perfectly yeah. acceptable. Fine. Thank you for that. Right, OK, have I got anybody else indicating that they wish to ask questions? Um, I can't see who that is. Oh, I think it's a guest and they're not supposed to be contributing anyway. So I there think, we are. I think yeah. Councillor Richards has got his hand up, Councillor oh, Passat, I think. Yeah. Right, Councillor Richards, take it away. Fab, thank you uh, very much, Chair, and thank you to the Chief Executive for, uh, for put, uh, putting this uh, report forward. Um, I just wanted to ask a question. I can see that you have um, uh, I've got an independent review and Jack Straw uh, is one of those people who is going to be undertaking that review. My question is, how um, closely has Jack Straw worked with Neath Port Albert Council in the past? In terms of what do you, you mean, Councillor Richards? Sorry, I'm not any uh, sorry, any sort of consultation work that he's done for Neath Port Albert Council. I just recall um, a meeting that I was at uh, earlier in the year, or maybe late last year, where he was he was present at one of our meetings, and I just wanted uh, to check how closely has he worked with Neath Port Albert Council, and how closely has he worked with. Um, uh, uh, Councillor Jones in particular uh, on different committees that they sit on together. Um, but, but it might be worth if I just say first of all that the review itself is going to be led by Rod Alcott and assisted by Jack Straw not the other way around so I think that might be a, a helpful thing to say in the first instance. I think um, from my knowledge, um, Councillor Richards, um, I think there's been work around the regional partnership board that I'm certainly aware that Jack Straw has been involved with. Um, and I don't know the detail of that because I've been on the outskirts of that work, to be honest with you. Um, he's done work in a number of other authorities as well. So if you're asking me, would he have had contact with Councillor Jones? And I'm sure that he would have in a number of different roles. Um, you know, personally, I don't see there be that being a problem um, for his role in this review. And he was recommended to me by the Welsh Local Government Association as somebody that would be a, an appropriate person to support it. So, you know, if you've got any concerns about that, I think you need to share those with me before we get too much further into this review. But I've certainly got it, not got any reason to believe that he wouldn't be anything other than impartial and do a proper job for us. But, you know, but as I say, if you've got any concerns, I think you need to make those known to me. Yeah, um, no, I just it was just a question to ask in terms of if there was a conflict of interest in any uh, maybe consultancy work that he's done for the local authority and whether or not that would uh, jeopardise, you know, any uh, any further work should the review yeah. suggest that 
um, you know, there's no malpractice taking place. So, yeah. No, and it's, it's a perfectly reasonable question for you to ask. Um, I hope you'll have seen from um, the, the little bit of detail on the terms of reference that the lead person for the review, Rod Alcott, is a very experienced member of, uh, formerly of the Wales Audit Office, who's got extensive experience at dealing with these kinds of reviews. So it's very much the, the review will be led by him, but say, assisted by Jack Straw. And I haven't got any reason to believe um, that it's inappropriate for him to be involved in it. As I say, he was recommended by the WLGA. And I think you've got two reviewers there who, between them, will give a very clear assurance to the committee. And also, you know, if they feel there are any areas of work that need strengthening or developing or whatever, they'll be absolutely straight with you about that. Yeah. Great. And uh, just to put on record, I'm in no way, uh, as I know you know, uh, Chief Executive, I'm in no way uh, questioning the uh, the professionalism of uh, um, Jack Straw either. Yeah, thank you very much. So are you happy with that explanation, Councillor Richards? Yeah, happy, uh, happy with that. Right. OK. I've had a request from the Democratic officers that I should remind the members of the public who are present that the chat box is not to be used um, by guests at this meeting. It's to be used by councillors themselves if they wish to communicate with me or if there is any technical issues that they need to, to raise. So if I could just remind you on that. Right, okay, have I got any other questions coming from anybody in the committee or any of our guest councillors at the committee? Right. No, nope. I just thought I saw one hovering then. <laughs> it's very difficult trying to do this on a screen. Um, I know that I was asked beforehand and the chief executive will be able to tell me whether this is relevant to this particular meeting today. Um, if there was um, a request to come to the I don't actually know where it would go to, but if there was a request coming for a public inquiry, would that be covered by um, this committee, what we're discussing today, or would that be something quite separate? Um, the reviews that are underway, Councillor Purcell, you know, the work that the Ombudsman is going to do and the, and the other agencies and the review that we've just been discussing, will obviously need to take their course and there will be findings from those inquiries and only when we get those findings will we be in a position, I think, to make informed decisions about any next steps as a council. I think in my understanding, and Craig can come in and give you more advice on this, but a public inquiry is not something that the council itself has a power to invoke in any event. That would be a matter for govern government. So if somebody wants to have the details of how those um, other processes work, I'm sure Craig would be able to set those out for you, um, you know, when, as and when um, anybody wants that information. But I think for now, it is important that those, you know, those inquiries and those reviews take their course. We need to be open minded um, and wait to see what the findings are. And then you'll have a full opportunity, as far as the review I've commissioned is concerned, to consider those findings, any recommendations, and then we'll take forward any actions that you know council agrees is necessary on the back of it. So uh, I think that's probably all I would want to say about that. Thank you very much for that. I was asked, approached and asked to ask that question. So I think we've had a good explanation there. Craig, do you want to add anything to that or should we just leave that as stated? No, I, I think that's absolutely fine, Councillor Purcell. I'd echo the comments of the Chief Executive. If members of the public or members, for example, have any queries, then obviously we can address those as time goes on, following the outcomes as well of any of these reviews. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Right, looking at this screen, I cannot see any other questions being indicated. Democratic Service Officers, have I missed anybody? I can't see anybody, Chair. Brilliant. Excellent. In that case, we look at the report being here just for um, information. The actual recommendation is that the audit committee receives the terms of reference for the external independent review and notes that the report setting out the findings of the review will be presented to the audit committee in due course. One of my questions was going to be to ask when do we anticipate that happening? I think we will be reassured as a committee that 
if this can come back to us mid to late April, then that's moving quite swiftly. And I think that gives us some reassurance. So can I ask, is the committee minded to accept this recommendation? Can I have any indications to the contrary? Otherwise, I shall assume you are all quite happy with this. I'm happy to move the recommendation, Chair. Brilliant, thank you. It's not an actual vote, we're just noting it, but I just want to make sure there's nobody who is not happy with this. Thank you very much, Councillor Walcott. Excellent. So if I can find the right piece of paper. Oh, right, got it. OK. Therefore, the report here is for recommendation. Sorry, the recommendation is for us to be happy to accept the report, which we appear to be happy to accept. So that is absolutely superb. And we now come to agenda item four. Any urgent items? I have no urgent items, in which case that brings us to the end of business for today's special audit committee. And I'd like to thank you all for attending. And again, to echo what was said before by the Chief Executive, to thank you all for making space to hold this meeting at very short notice. Thank you very much indeed. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon. Thank you, committee members.